Good afternoon, everybody. I wanted to let you know that we have pizza in the back. If anyone is interested, please help yourselves. Yummy, free pizza. It's more delicious when it's free. I think. So, um, my name is Livia Newbert, and alongside my colleague Chad Agat Singer, we've decided to um, put together a series of panels featuring students here at the college to speak about their backgrounds um, and their trajectory, the, the positives and the negatives, what they've learned. Hi. Um, and so I want to thank you all of you, all of you for being here today. Um, we had originally scheduled three students to speak, but wouldn't, one of them couldn't make it. So, but we still have uh, Maria Udin uh, right over here. Maria is from Bangladesh, and we Hello also. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and we have Asima Ahmad from Pakistan. Hello and they're going to be talking to us today, okay? So, uh, once again, the idea of this project that we named Student Voices um, is to educate our college community and enlighten. Uh, we want our students to feel stronger, a stronger sense of belonging here at BCC. Um, and we believe that for that to fully happen, we need to open and want to learn more about who they are as individuals and also um, as members of the college community. We all need to open to be open to accepting the fact that the world has changed and it is changing as we speak before our eyes. Things that seemed to work 20 years ago don't work anymore today. Things that were acceptable 20 years ago are not acceptable anymore today. They shouldn't have been acceptable 20 years ago, <laughs> a lot of them. So this is the time to learn, and that's why we're here. I want to thank you for being here, and open your minds, open your eyes, open your ears. I hope you learn something meaningful. I know you will. Um, they're going um, to speak first, and then at the end, we're going to reserve some time for questions, okay? For my students, listen carefully. I would love for you to ask questions at the end. Um, enjoy, okay? So Maria is gonna start? Okay. Hello everyone, my name is um, Maria. <laughs> my name is Maria Odin and I am a wife and mother of three children. I was born in Bangladesh. I have been uh, in the US uh, roughly 12 years now. The, the classes that BCC had offered um, felt perfect for me. It has a wide variation of, um, of classes, so when I finally decided on what I want as my new career, I can ta uh, take all the necessary classes to pursue my dream. The college uh, is also at very resp uh, responsive I mean, sorry, responsible for approximately to me because I live in Fall River. This is my first semester at BCC. It has brought me so many um, rewarding experiences. I have built strong bond with my professors. They are very helpful and th I am thanking them for doing their extremely, um, extremely well. My peers are nice and uh, respectful. We all talk to each other and we had an amazing time in the class. My advisor, Livia, is very good at advising. She's um, making everything so much easier. Even though my experience here at BCC has been so good, it has not always been very um, easy for me. I have encountered many challenges through in my life. I have I have been judged for my religion so many times. Ever since I came in the US, however I go out, people think I'm not smart and I don't know English because I'm wearing the hijab. Wearing a hijab, certain people are um, the, have a wrong um, impressions. 
in truth, I am wearing the, this hijab right now to covering my uh, body uh, to protect myself from overting eyes. I feel as if this other, um, if rather un unfair to judge someone, you don't have to know, you don't um, even know someone, some people. Some people ignored, um, others uh, sent me hateful um, stares. At the Holocaust, I never forget the story. I mean, I, I never forget the event when I had a, um, we had a few, few days ago the event. Mm, I had my hijab on as usual. The one woman came in. The first uh, thought in my uh, came in my mind. She is pretty. She came all, came away and walked by me. As the passed me, we made eye contact. Uh, she broke away and went to stand next to me. Thirty second. Thirty second later, I noticed she creeping. Um, I noticed her slowly trying to get out from the room. I turned around and see her slowly creeping to the door. It is wrong to make consumptions about other people. Don't judge other people how they look. Inside looks to the, the inside their, the truth lays. We are all people. In every religion have a good people and bad people. Uh, just because uh, just because one person in the group did something bad doesn't mean the rest of the people in the particular group think that uh, what they did was right. Believe me, when I heard about um, uh, hap had happened on 9/11 in New York, I was uh, horrified and mortified. I was a peace. Um, I want a peaceful world where we can all just accept each other who we are. No discrimination, no racism, just a world where human are human and accept each other as they are. No matter if you are white, you are black, you are Muslim, you are Christian, or uh, you are gay, you are state, no matter who and what you are. In an ideal world, we all just want to be accepted. Being a Muslim in this country has brought me many hardship as well as many rewards. Then there are those who have been nice to me and uh, those who have helped me. We need more people like this in the earth, who, people who accept you for who you. In my country, um, in my country, we have a 90% population in Muslim. Uh, the 10% made out of um, Bodish, Hindu, and Christians. We all celebrated each other's holiday. We respect each other. We never say any. We never. I never seen any hate in my country. We are all just a big happy family and friends. I had a friend. I had a, so many friends uh, from other religions in my uh, country. We are Muslim people too. Uh, we are Muslim. We are people too. Just because we follow the religion that you may not understand or not agree with doesn't mean that we are bad. We are just like human beings. Ones that just uh, want to live life, make something it is, um, make something of it and go to heaven when you die. There are many people that have helped uh, help you along the way and uh, chance are there will be more. At BCC, there are many resources that will help you succeed and reach your goals. The tutor, advisor um, have helped me understand uh, more of what I need to know and give me extra help after classes. One thing that I wish BCC had is uh, more available resources in Bangla. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Maria. Does anyone have any questions for Maria right now? Marcus? Let me take the mic. Hello, I'm just asking uh, how can you handle or deal with that criticism from people who have concern about your religion? Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. 
Um, question two. I'll talk um, about with them how much I know about my religion and uh, tell them what is it. And if you, they don't understand everything, then I'll give my uh, I'll give my Quran. Then they can read and understand more better because I'm not a scholar. I can tell them everything. Hi, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that thank you for coming here and speaking to all of us. It's very interesting. Um, I just had uh, one quick question. That part at, at the end of your speech where you said that you wish the school had more resources, and what was that last part? The last part is my, my language is called Bangla. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. That makes a lot more sense. You're now. welcome. Thanks for your <laughs> question. I think she means more materials and you know promotional materials and things in her language, which is yeah. Bangla, right? Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, hi, Maria. What is the biggest challenge for you to be uh, here? To be here? To be? What is the best challenge for you when you uh, come to be here? United States? Um, big challenges like when people see like uh, people like I feel like people thought about it like oh, they don't know anything and uh, how they look and then that looks perfect and like those kind of stuff like I facing they are not say hi or hi. like when I come here first because in my country if I say uh, saw something say hi or if I say Muslim people so the Muslim people is just assalamu alaikum, like those kind of, and other religion, hello, or those kind of. But when I came here, if I say somebody, oh, hello, that people are like, some people are okay, but some people. Yeah. So do you teach for your children your uh, native culture? Yes, I am. Any other questions? Hi, Maria. Hello. Thank you for speaking with us today. Um, my question is, what major are you pursuing here at BCC? What do you want to do? Um, actually, I like uh, um, computer science. So yeah, I'll see. <laughs> What can I do? But first, I want to finish my uh, ESL courses. Anybody else? One more? How does someone become a Muslim? I'm sorry? What do you say? How <laughs> does someone become a Muslim? Oh, how does somebody become a Muslim? Um, I born in the Muslim, but because someone, uh, when they read uh, our uh, holy book, this is called Quran, they can see and they, can, they see the every rule and if somebody like it, they, they become a Muslim and if they don't like it, it's okay. But our religion said it will always peace and don't harm others. And some people did something bad. This is not belongs to our religion, but they are affected to our religion. But this is not belongs to our religion. Our, our religion is always be peace. If you read the Quran, you will see everything in there. No killing, no nothing. You can't even talk, um, you can't give any hardship to the other people by your mouth. This is the also uh, not good. have a question as you are um, as you are a muslim so i know about you have like ramadan month that you have you cannot eat or you cannot drink so i don't know why they do that mm -hmm. so just kind of okay. want to know thank you for your question um yeah this is called ramadan and this is once one month and uh, once a year and um because this is part of the religion. We have to do the fasting because of this. God want to show you, because you have a, enough food in, in your home, you can eat, and a lot of people don't care about the food. So, and some people are really poor, they cannot afford their food. So 
if you uh, do the fasting, like sunset to sunrise, you, you will understand like how people survive their life, how, like poor people who don't have a food. So when you understand something, you will, when you see something over there, you will say, oh, yeah, I know the feeling if you don't eat. Yeah. Anyone else? OK, we're going to move on to Asima now. Oh, one more? Sorry. Uh, I have a question. Is your dress, is your religion, right? Or can change your, um, is your culture or religion? Dress is, uh, no, my religion said you have to cover your body, protecting your body to the other, so, and how much I can, I do it, but, <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? So, um, so if in the future this thing never changed, like if the people keep thinking about your religion in different, um, different thinking, different way, um, will you think to change yourself or be yourself? Um, good question. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I never gonna change my religion um, because I like it. And I know what my religion said, and people think about it, what they think, but whatever I like it, I want to do it. Yes. I like that, Maria. Oh, okay. Do you have <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Your religion is Muslim, so you can eat pork? No, no. We cannot eat pork, or you, we cannot eat like um, whatever in the store. We cannot. We we have to eat kosher food. Like I can, I allowed to eat chicken or cow meat or goat meat, those kind of meat. But we have to um, kill ourselves not with a shot. If it's uh, killed by shot, we cannot eat it. And it is also good for your, uh, not good for your health. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. One more question, and we'll move on. I have a question about when you're fasting. I have a question when you're fasting. Um, you say something about sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, like when the sun is raising, this, before that, we have to stop our eating. This is the certain time. And then the um, sunset is when the night is coming, like the sun is already gone. This so time. you don't eat during the whole day? No, no eating, no drinking, nothing. So you just nothing. eat at night? Yeah. When the sun yeah, is gone? Yeah, the night time we can eat. Yeah. All month, right? Yeah. All month. All month. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Asima wants you to save some questions for her. <laughs> okay, Asima, we're ready for you. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Okay, hard question. Hello everyone, teacher and my great classmate, everyone here. My name is Asima Mahmood Ahmed. I am from Pakistan. I am married. My husband, he is a doctor at St. Anne and Charlton. I have four kids, seven years, six years, three years, and one is my little eight month. I have been in over here in USA more than 10 years. Why I choose BCC, I wanna share with you guys. I want pharmacy technician in future. I am a mother. It's hard to me to continue study with four kids. But in BCC, I got flexible time to do continue my study. When I was looking for college online, after a long research, I found BCC best and convenient college for me. BCC make me social with other people from different country and make makes new friend. That's why I am getting into a selective college is going to require a 
strong academic record. BCC builds my academic skill. Challenging. I am a mother. This is a big challenge for me. I am doing everything alone. Like I take care of my kids, make food, cleaning up, laundry, sometime emergency case like a kids in school or at home. Dismiss at school. I, my class start 12.30. And same time, some, sometime in the month, my kids, they have a dismiss in school is same time. That time, it, it was very hard. Like in Monday, I had my writing class, but no, I, I have never any chance to like leave to school. I, I went to school to pick up my kids, quickly drop home, and come over here. I don't want to drop my class. And my homework, still I'm attending my college every day. I don't want to give up. I will keep working to achieve my goal to, with my kids and my hard working. I want to tell you about something to religion. My, my religion means is peace. My religion teach me to help others. Don't see which religion they are or which country they are from. If you see somebody help me, whatever they are from country, my, my responsibility to help them. And if they are hunger, give them food as like whatever I like it. The food, their shelter, their clothes and everything. My religion is, is like teach me like that. And also because Pakistan, there is a lot of other country people live, Indian, especially Christian, Muslim, and other one. When is our holiday came, like I am a Muslim, I'm celebrate Eid, Ramadan. And believe me, you guys, like a lot of Christian, a lot of Indian, a lot of other countries, like they, they lived in my country, they respect and they like uh, same celebrate with us. And same thing, when is a Christmas come to in my country, my go government, they like, still like, um, I saw like when I'm born to till now, three day off on the Christmas. And if it's like Hindu culture or other culture, they have like a, a, the holiday, they give it off to them. So that's the meaning. Of, and I want to sharing one, uh, one thing over here about for my daughter. When I came in Massachusetts, I care, I, I've been here like almost four years. In Star, I was came here 2014, October. I was uh, living in Fall River near to my college. I'm living in court, court like court, uh, like my, my house number is 19. And front of number is th three. My daughter, she was five year old. I am almost four or five year old. And the front of number three house, the girl, she's very pretty, so nice. Her name is Sophia. She was same my daughter age. When we came, we move over here. They both of were very good friend. They playing each other. They share their things. This. Uh, like uh, my daughter, I like uh, she uh, she uh, she doesn't know before like how to read like books. But the girl, because she she born here, even my daughter she was born here. But because my native language is home is Urdu, so mostly my daughter she listen to me and she speak my language before she going to school. She was sitting with with her, and sh then she read like she starting to read book. So I was so happy. They both of are going going very well. Suddenly, like I saw, like uh, my daughter, she was standing on out of her door, and the 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 girl, her father, he doesn't open the door, 
and uh, like 10 minutes, 50 minutes, I always keep in watching on my daughter in my window. And I went outside, I asked, what happened with, with you? She was crying. She said, mom, her father, he doesn't allow to play with me. OK, then I said, OK, maybe she, uh, maybe she, she was busy with some work, cooking or like uh, eating something like that. Next day, third day, fourth day, same thing like that. Then I talked to her father. And uh, her, uh, but her father, he wasn't home. Her grandmother, she came, and she told me like uh, she is busy because uh, she is like uh, I we we are fixing her time to she uh, she go to back bed on time, and she doesn't have a time, so that's why I'm we are not allowed to go outside to play anyone. I said okay. Even like uh, my house, which is my do my daughter room. Her window and the third number window, her, the, the girl, they both of, uh, like before when they met, bef they both of are sitting on the window and they're showing their book, they're showing their clothes and something like that. Sometimes they're talking on window because this, my house like that and there is like that. And her father, he changed her room and he, he, uh, he was changed her room and they don't talk to each other anymore. And after that, like I talked to her father, he said, I, I watching some news and uh, in, in TV like that for Muslim people. So I'm not allowing to my daughter to play with your daughter. My just question here, because I tell the story about for my daughter, because the kids are kids. We are adults. We know that, like what, we, what is good for our kids or not. The kids, they don't understand religion, culture, and anything. And just my question, like, uh, don't like, uh, don't give it to, uh, like, deliver to your kids with a bad thing about any culture. Like, we are human. We, if if she play with my daughter and they play, they gonna be understand to each other. They love to each other. Oh, she's from other country, but she love me. She play me. Then she think about more respect to uh, other one. And she, the girl she respect for Muslim one. So that's why I am sharing my this story over here. The last thing uh, I'm talking about from my college, because there is a many, many, many good teacher, helper, advisor over here. I, I was starting my college last year, 2017, my first semester. I am really thankful for my teacher, grammar teacher, Miss Diana, and my uh, reading teacher is Miss uh, Jackie. Believe me, when I starting, believe me, like uh, I wasn't reading too much, and my grammar was so poor. But the both of teacher, they uh, they they support me. They give me like good thought and attention. Then now I can read very well, and this is my second semester. I am talking about one teacher must over here. Miss Livia Norbert. When I came over here, like I, this is for my starting. I wasn't start my college, so I just said, teacher, I wanna start for my major, like a, a pharmacy technician. She said, Asma, you can start, but it's my advice. You can start your ESL classes because when you improve too much your English, writing, reading, then. Then when you're going to your starting your major, you feel much different and you understand very easily. And that's true. This is right now. I can understand a lot of English. Not like like right now, this is my second semester. I have too much more classes. But I think and I believe like when is the end of my ESL, I, I learned a lot. So that's the teacher, Livia. She is the one who has given me the opportunity to see myself improving every day by her continuous support and guidance. She teach me improving my conversation, and I could feel a strong drive to study more and more of this language. The last one just uh, is because when I came over here, I. I got the paper. There is this something in English, Portuguese, or maybe Spanish. I just saying like I just my wish is BCC had is more available resources in Urdu, because some is Pakistani or like 
like me, like they come, sometimes they don't understand too much English, they can be read for Urdu, in Urdu. That's all, thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. I promise you, I did not make them say anything about me, okay? It's all on them, I promise, I promise. Thank you so much. I want to thank them uh, for being here today because it takes a lot of courage. Nicely. <laughs> Wait. No question. That's why I told you save the question for me. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage. I can't see. See? Anyway. Bye. Any questions <laughs> from the audience? <laughs> then we'll move on to something else. Any questions for Asima? No, I don't want to accept it. I don't want to accept it. <laughs> Asima, hello. OK. Uh, I think this question is a personal question, but really I'm curious to know the answer. Do you care to, about to teach other about your religion to be a Muslim people, or you don't care about that? What, what did you say? I mean that, do you care to teach others about your religion, or you don't care about that, to be a Muslim people? Be a Muslim to teach other religion? Yeah. No, this is very good for me. This is a very good opportunity, like I will teach to other, uh, other people. Because this is not mean like I am only like fixed on uh, uh, my culture. Over here, like my teacher, in our class, a lot of different country, the students sit over here. But she is teach each and everyone, like think about they are my students. So I, this is very good. And I'm so ha happy, like if I get the uh, teach other, other culture or other kids. Anybody else has a question? Hi, Asima. Thank you for your story today. I want to have I have a question. Who is she asking me a question? It's Pat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask that why you do not want to wear the hijab, the part of your religion? Oh, hijab. You don't want the hijab. Oh, hijab. I understand her question, ma'am. Actually, thank you so much, Pat. I know I expect this question, but thing is, Islam doesn't mean like we go all everywhere like wear the hijab so if you like it you can wear if you don't like it that doesn't mean it's allowed or fix it we need to wear that except on us over here and they'll move more hi um first of all i like your shirt it's very nice um <laughs> Um, I just wanted to know if it, are you, is your daughter still like trying to hang out with that girl or something like that? Are you, are you guys gonna try to reach a compromise or something? My daughter, what? Uh, is your daughter? She she hung out with a girl that lived ne uh, next to her, but the father didn't want it. Yeah. Are father. you guys going to like try to reach a compromise or something? No, actually, now right now my daughter she's busy with the, her school. Um, but they didn't get the chance to again. But uh, definitely, like uh, uh, her um, her birthday, is, I think 19 April, and my daughter's uh, birthday is 20 April. Luckily, so every birthday, my daughter she uh, bought the gift and give it to her, and that day only they meet to each other. Otherwise. I think she's busy her school and my daughter she's busy on her school. They didn't get the chance after that. Uh, this next question actually could go to both of you. I was just wondering um, what denomination of Islam do you practice? What the nominee? What denomination? Like um, I know that there's distinctions between like uh, Sunnis and like other groups like that. Teacher, I don't understand. Can you tell me? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like the num different denominations oh. in the Muslim religion, Sunni oh. and Shia. Is oh, that okay. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I I I don't know, but uh, we are Sunni. I don't know you, but I I am Sunni. <laughs> <laughs> 
because right now is lot of groups so, yeah in the world is lot of groups is they made a new new groups and uh, i don't know <laughs> but i am sunni yeah whatever the quran said how quran said we have to follow i am the, this this group okay. i am not believing other everything like people are making something and say i'm not like those kind of group i understand now yes i am sunni too actually um, yeah uh, in pakistan there is uh, like a lot of people have uh, like uh, uh, they understand uh, they are muslim too but they do something different different but like i am sunni we are not like very strict we are very humble plight what is like uh, what is like our life going going on smoothly we're going to be follow this one no like uh, like we put something or brave or like that no other question i'll come back to you okay also hi asma thank you uh, i like your story about your daughter that was very cute but my question is when this the all those things that people see on tv with the muslim how you deal with that people think about what like when you see stuff on tv about a muslim or about pakistan like how you deal with that how i deal with it yes if you if you talk to me so i explain them like uh, because if you guys see like only known like muslim there is a lot of country there is a, like different different uh, happen like that so when they talk to me i i will give you to answer but most of the them because uh, i'm not like watching for too much news so i said i'm sorry about that because i don't know about that happen so that's the thing is you had hi asima how are thank, you thank you my dear i had a question for you you said that you wanted more classes here in your language right of resources okay so if you had more resources and you were able to sit down with someone that would help you every day while you were here in school speaking only in your language don't you feel like that would set you back in learning how to speak better english no my meaning is because sometime if you guys go to the hospital or some social security office somewhere you got the paper there is a one time they explain in english and downside is a uh, spanish or portuguese a lot of in uh, uh, people in america pakistan bangladesh or other like uh, indian my meaning is because i'm telling you very truth like uh, some people they doesn't know too much english at least that downside because three language or two language almost on the paper i just prefer like one more language added like in urdu like when new uh, student came here they don't know too much english or uh, mostly because main purpose when student came here they need they they, they need to learn english if he is the portuguese he going to be understand but because is the pakistani they don't understand portuguese and english both language because their language is different so my meaning if is some a one line add up for in urdu they going to be understand easily so you feel like if a paper said a sentence in english then repeated it in your language that would help you understand it exactly. better okay. exactly okay thank you you welcome i think mostly and i just want to add something to that yes, um I think what she's trying to say is that when a student first comes to the college um if a student is not from here is from you know a foreign country recently immigrated to the United States um coming from for information um the information that is passed out about financial aid for example it's already complicated as it is in English you know to, to, if you speak the language let alone if you don't speak the language very well it's you might as well just you know do a bunch of scribbles on a piece of paper cuz it's very complicated a lot of times um they are mature women but a lot of times for younger students um it's their parents who are going to be reading those papers it's not you know and signing those papers and even though the student speaks english uh fairly well the parents don't and the students are bringing home those those documents in english for their parents to read and sign 
So that makes it a little bit more complicated um, of a process. So I, I think what they're trying to say is um, if we could perhaps the information that admissions gives out and financial aid gives out uh, were in more than one language, um, that would be helpful. And also, like the signs that you see around, if you go to another country, and that is, think about it, have you ever traveled abroad, anyone? Other than you, you're all from another country, but if you travel abroad, where have you been? Japan. So doesn't it feel good when you're in another country and all of a sudden you see a sign in English or in Portuguese and you're like, oh my God, you like you feel a part of that, that small group, you know, it makes you feel welcome, it makes you feel like it's your safe haven. I could go there and people would speak my language if I needed anything, they would be able to help me out. So I think that's, we do a really good job here, but we could do better. I think. I think that's what she was trying to say. Any other questions? Diane. Thank you, Livia. It's not really a question, it's just a comment. And this is what probably Livia was trying to say before. Um, and she can't because she gets very emotional, as do I. Um, I've known both of these students, worked with both of these students. They are both surviving grammar classes, right? So they are motivated. And I'm so proud of you guys. Thank really. you, DJ. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, just think about if I were up here being a professional. You know, you get a little nervous, right? Speaking in front of these people. These are students. They're young women. They're ESL students speaking in a language that's not their first language, and they're speaking about a religion that people have different opinions about. And so I just want to congratulate you. I'm really impressed. Thank, Thank you, you so much, teacher. I'm, I thought I'm lucky you asking me the question. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say, and I couldn't. Any other questions over here? Of course, Bukati. Of course you have a question. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, my question goes to both of you. Okay, thank you. And, I'm so uh, sad. <laughs> <You're both laughs> okay. It's very easy, quick and short. Uh, how do you guys view yourself in the near future? What? How do you see yourself in the near future after college? Oh, this is a very, very good question. Yes, actually, same, I told you, like, this is a very hard for me, believe me, like, if you guys come to my home and see what I'm doing with my four, even, like, uh, night time, like, my little one, he was in my leg, somebody, he pulled the, my, my computer light on and something like that, but I don't want to give up back, and, in, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, one day, I will be get for I achieve my goal, and I will be yeah. pharmacy technician in my future. Thank you, Bukari. Um, I want to success when I uh, when I begin finish uh, the college. I want to see um, my success because I feel like I can because the beginning of the semester I improve a lot, and my teachers are helping a lot and um, yeah i am going to achieve my goal pretty soon <laughs> thank you any other questions no oh um i have a question do you seem since you've been coming to college here that it seems any of the classes have been hard for you guys to do Or harder for you guys to accomplish? Any class you're talking about? Classes in general. Anything has been particularly challenging for you? Any of your classes? It's getting okay. Um, actually, not. How our professors uh, teach us is makes easier, and we focus on what they teach us. 
Yes, for me, I have one question. For who? Both of you. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, in your country, but in U.S., uh, is they are Muslim, but someone believe in another religion. What happened to them? Um, someone believe it. Someone believe in Muslim, uh -huh. but later they believe in another religion. What okay. happened to them? Oh, um, actually nothing happened to them because their freedom. If they like uh, what religion they feel like they are perfect for them, they can choose it. It's not any restriction or anything. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Um, did you ever think um, about in future or maybe now about your kids if they ever gonna going happen with him like someone bullying them or say something about their religion like if they come your kids and tell you something what will your answer be oh. um, thank you so much Maria and um, those kind of Event, a situation I had. Um, like my younger daughter, I mean my older daughter, she went to the Atlantis Charter School and um, one day a boy tell her something like some kind uh, terrorist something say, terrorist terrorism. Called her a terrorist? Yeah, something. Okay. And she hear it, and then she don't say anything because she follow the school rule. She cannot talk or go back and tell something. So she wait, and when she came home, she um, tell me about what happened in the playground. And then the next day, I went there with her and tell her professor, and she was re very upset. And they knows my um, uh, daughter since she's. Uh, PK. And um, they said they want to talk with the, uh, the, his family. And uh, she asked me, you want to um, be here when we are, I'm going to talk with the, his family. And this is very um, upset to her and me as well. And then um, she talked with her and her, his family said, sorry, we did not. We don't know how he learned those kind of stuff. And um, I, we don't push our, um, I don't push my f uh, daughter to wear the scarf, those kind of stuff, but they did it by themselves because my daughter, she's um, tried to start it when she go, uh, went to the second grade. And then I said, <laughs> it's too young to start it. You will start it later if you like it. But she don't uh, hear me, uh, heard me, and then she started to wear the hijab. And a um, few days later, she said, Mommy, I think so you were right. When I'm going older, then I'm going to start wearing. And I said, OK, well, when you feel you OK, I'm not going to push you to wear it and do it. Whatever you like, it, you can do it. You know the religion. So that's it. Because uh, some people thought about it, we are like somebody push because you have to do it. Now, you don't have to do it because you know the religion's rule and everything. If you like it, you can do it. If you don't like it, it's OK. Anyone else has a question? I know that a lot of people here in America tend to perceive uh, dressing up that way, covering yourself up as either like oppressive or totalitarian, you know, like being forced to do something. Would you? Do you personally believe the opposite? Do you think that it's like liberating, like your choice to be able to dress like that? Yeah, because I choose it. My husband or don't push me, or nobody pushed me. But I started when I understand everything, because I read my Quran, and when I see how you cover it, this is good for you. And then I started. I started like eight, 
uh, about 10 years ago, I started. Yeah, this is my choice. Not, nobody forced me to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to give you to uh, answer this question. Uh, this is only except on your, yourself, like what, what I like it. She wearing hijab, I'm a Muslim too, I'm not wearing. But that no meaning, like if I'm not wearing hijab, so I'm not respect for my culture. So, uh, like uh, maybe after a few years, like um, I'm, I'm wearing hijab, or maybe not. But th that's not meaning like uh, somebody uh, force me, or like even my family, my husband, we are except on, like they said, except on you guys, whatever you like it. That's it. One more question. So what is the age for when girls supposed to cover herself? Um, supposed to like when you are going, um, <laughs> like 12 years. Yeah. Because this time you are going teenager. This time. Yeah, become a woman, you can do it. When a girl becomes a woman. Yeah, and if you don't like it, it's up to you. But if you follow the religion, you can do it. All right. Well, once again, I want to thank Asima and uh, Maria for being here. Very brave of them. It's not easy to put themselves in a position where, you know, open themselves up for questions. I want to thank all of you for your kind questions and um, for being here. Um, anyone wants to share anything special that they have learned after uh, hearing Maria and uh, Asima speak today? No? I hope you, you want to share. I just think it's a, I just think that it's really important to have uh, voices like yourself stand up in front of a crowd of people, mostly Americans, and say, tell us more about your culture because if there isn't representation for it from people who actually practice it like you, then that leaves Americans to kind of color in your culture with their own perceptions. And I think it's really good that people like you get up and say, this is what we believe, this is what we don't believe, we don't condone the stereotypes, this is what we actually practice, because surely not everyone groups Christianity with the actions of the Westboro Baptist Church, so it's a really good thing to see um, moderate people come up and share their experiences in a way that makes them both relatable and humanizes them. What's your name? Stephen. Thank you very much for your kind words, Stephen. Yes. Uh, anyone else wants to say anything? If not, I want to thank you all once again for being here. Please, there's pizza in the back. Can I get a big round of applause for Maria and... Our